In today's video, I thought it would be fun to do a holiday gift guide for artists or crafters or just creative people in general, and I tried to pick items that people would most likely not have, and I've got a few different options for you, and make sure you watch till the end because I've got a couple of bonus items for people that already have a lot of items and you're really not sure what to get them, so those will be really helpful for you. I will try to have everything linked down in the description below so it's really easy for you to find everything that I mention, but let's just get right into the video. And you're already probably wondering what this is, so this goes along with this kit here. This is a little acrylic kit and it's just fun if somebody wants to try it out but they're not really sure if they would be into it. So it comes with everything that you would need essentially. So it comes with the canvas. Now the canvas did come folded up, so I ended up laying it out flat and putting some books on top of it. And then I rolled it up just to get some creases out, but I'll show you what this looks like afterwards. But it comes with some little things here that you can hang it on the wall once you're finished. And then it comes with the paints that you need. So these are all the paints that you will need for the kit. It comes with an image so you'll know what your painting so you can have that like next to you. It comes with a few little brushes now. To be honest, these brushes don't look like the best and they look pretty small. However, when you look at the canvas, the one that I picked has all these little like small areas in some of them, but it does have a few bigger areas. So I kind of get why they gave you some small brushes. But this is fun if you just want to like go in front of the TV and just have something to paint along with. Now there are like uh, diamond painting kits and different things like this, but I wanted to try this one out. Now the next thing I have on my list is also acrylics, but this is the Liquitex Basics 48 set of acrylics. And as you can see here, these are little tiny bottles. So the reason I like this is because if somebody isn't sure if they want to get into acrylics, this isn't expensive at all. It's actually quite cheap for what you get. And you get loads of different colors here, as you can see. They all come in little bottles. So once you start using them, you'll know if you like a certain color more than other colors. And then you can go ahead and buy those colors in the bigger bottles. But what I really like about this is it still has all the information on these. So it'll tell you if it's opaque. Um, the light fast is excellent and all of these are pretty much light fast except for the metallic colors. So that's one thing I really like about the Liquitex Basics. Um, they're great acrylics to start with and this set just gives you so much variety here. Now just to go along with these real quickly, I do like these uh, Simply Simmons brushes and a lot of them are filbert brushes but you can get a pack of these for all different um, sizes and I find these work really well with acrylics. The next thing I have here is this glass palette and I apologize for the glare. It is glaring because of its glass but this is great for acrylics. So this is great because the paint won't really stick to it. Now it dries and stick to it here, but you can scrape it off. So you've always got a nice clean surface. Um, I like this gray one because as you're painting with it, it gives you sort of like a neutral background. So you can see what your colors are looking like. Um, they do have a clear version and a white version as well, I think. But this is really great. And this is actually made to fit into a wet palette. And this comes in different sizes as well, so it'll fit different um, sized wet palettes if you have those. So instead of using the, the paper with the sponge, you could put this in there and then have a wet paper towel, have it off to the side, and it'll keep your paints wet just the same. Now this is the wet palette that I'm talking about, and this is a big one. I forget how much it is. I think it's a 12 by 16 maybe, but this seals really good. And if I can get the top off here, but as you can see here, it will fit into this and then you just put a wet piece of paper towel or something in the corner and it'll keep your clumps of paint wet. Now, anything that you've pulled out, like this thinner area, it will still dry, but your clumps of paint, it will keep wet for, you know, a good couple of weeks. And you can use this for acrylics, oils, gouache, really any type of paint that comes in a tube. Now, I'm pretty sure this is the last acrylic related thing I have. This was really fun to use. Now, this is an acrylic pouring kit and this comes with everything that you need. So you've got all of your paints here. You've got your silicone drops um, to create some of those cells and it comes with a canvas as well. Now, this is the canvas that it came with. 
but all of these canvases I did with this kit. So I already owned these canvases, but these were all the same paints. So as you can see, just having a few little bottles like this, and actually I'll grab the bottles and show you what they look like. So this was the silicone drops, and as you can see here, you get enough here so that if you wanna go out and buy some extra acrylic paint um, to do some more pouring, you really don't need any more drops at all. You've got enough here. And then these are some of the paints that I have left. Now I finished the white completely, so I've only got um, the blue and the gold left, but these are the size of the bottles here. And I mean, these did me all of these paintings here. So even if you were to get some of those canvas panels to go along with this, because the one canvas, you know, it's fun. You get to do one, but I find once you want to do one, you've already got all of your stuff out ready to go. You want to have a couple canvases so that you can really play around with it. And just make sure that you have something down underneath of it. I think I used a puppy pee pad underneath just because you will get paint coming off of the sides of it. So it can be a little messy, but my gosh, this was so fun to play around with. And I do have a video uh, last month of playing around with this and doing all of these acrylic pours. So if you're interested in watching that, um, you can go back and watch that video. Now, the next items that I have here are a little bit more of splurge items, but if you've got a watercolorist who's looking to upgrade their brushes, but they're not sure what to get, I highly recommend these silver black velvet brushes. These are my absolute favorite. And since I've tried these brushes, I will not go back to other brushes. Now, this is a size 12, 8, and 4. This comes in a three pack like this, and honestly, these three brushes are the only brushes that you will ever need. Unless you paint really, really big or really, really small, these will do just about everything you will ever need. Now, you can also buy them individually, so if you just wanted to try one brush, I would recommend the size 8 because this is a pretty good overall brush, and it still comes to a pretty fine tip, so you can still get some detail with this. Even the size 12, you can see, comes to a really nice tip. So that's what I like about these brushes. Now, a couple of add-on brushes that I really like is the 3 quarter inch flat. I use this a lot to wet my paper. With, it holds a lot of water so I can wet my paper really quickly if I'm doing wet and wet. And then if I really need some, some fine details, I will use this number one uh, script liner brush. And this has a really tiny point once it's wet. So I really highly recommend these brushes. Now, going along with the brush theme, I actually really like these paint pucks. And what you do is you stick them in your jar. And then when you're rinsing your brush off instead of just rinsing it into the water you can actually rinse it onto here and it removes the paint from your brush extremely well so especially if you're using something like gouache or thicker paints like acrylics these work really well but you can see there's a little like sticky thing here and you just get that wet and stick it to the bottom of the the container that you're using and you can put this in whatever container and they work really well. This comes in a three pack. So depending how many jars you have, or if you use a bigger bucket, then you could put all three in the bottom of it. But I highly recommend these. Now going along with the brush cleaning theme, I highly recommend this pink soap from Speedball. And this is a brush cleaner. This does a, an amazing job um, to clean your brushes. But I also use this with my soft tools um, to get out pastel from them. And I like to use this little makeup brush cleaner. So this is actually for cosmetic makeup brushes, but it's really nice because it will pop down like this. And I just put a little bit of water at the bottom. I'll put some pink soap in it. And then I just swish my brushes. And this is silicone as well. So it's really gentle on your brushes. And the ridges here just allow the paint to really come off the brush as well. Now, the next thing I have here might look a little weird, but this is great for a pastel artist. So what this does is it will puff air when you go like this. And I use it to puff the dust off of my work. So instead of blowing and potentially spitting on my artwork or inhaling that dust, you can use this and it will puff all the dust off and then I'll usually have my garbage can down at the bottom of my desk and I will blow it like this down into my um, garbage can and this just makes it so much easier to get a little layer of dust off your work before you go and blend because if you've got um, any dark dust on a light area and you go ahead to try to blend it will muddy up those colors so fast so this is definitely a lifesaver for that. The next thing I have here might seem really simple and basic but I think it's a great tool for every artist and what it is 
is a color wheel, just a simple color wheel here. Now this one's great because it shows you all the different colors around like this, but it's also great because you can see right away what colors are complementary. Um, so whatever is opposite of it is its complementary color. And then it's got some information here. So if you add red, this is what it's gonna look like. If you add yellow, that's what it's gonna look like. And if you add blue. And on the back here, it's got some information about complementary palettes. So this has got some really nice basic information that we don't always think about while we're painting. And sometimes you wonder why your colors are getting muddy. But if you really look at this and study it, this will give you the information. So this is always great to have on hand. Then I have this Caran d'Ache palette. And this is really cool because one side of this is a little textured and the other side is really smooth. So this is sort of like a twofold type palette. So if you're using pencils like watercolor pencils or ink tents or ink tents blocks, you can use them on this side if you wanna create a wash. So you can just scribble your pencil on here and then wet it out and then create that wash instead of scribbling on with the pencil because I know certain types of watercolor pencils don't always blend out as nicely as higher end ones. So depending what you're working with, this will help you work with it a little bit better. And this will work with so many water soluble products. So like the Caran d'Ache Neo Colors 2, uh, the new pastels you can use on this, water soluble oil pastels, pretty much anything that's water soluble that comes in a solid form, you could use to uh, go on this and then to wash it out. So this really comes in handy for people that like to use those types of products. This is a really fun set for an artist who likes to try different types of papers. And this is the Legion Mini Artist Pastel and this is a complete set so it comes with all 13 of their different papers and it just gives you some mini paper pads here to try I will just show you quickly so you've got the warm white you've got their cotton their light uh, their craft paper their colored paper uh, Yupo translucent their heavy Yupo medium Yupo heavy cold pressed paper regular cold pressed paper, hot pressed paper, just their white drawing paper, and then their black cold pressed paper. So you've got quite a bit here and each one does have quite a few different little papers. But instead of um, splurging and getting one big pad of paper and then somebody not ending up liking it, they can try out a bunch of little papers, try their medium on each little one and then decide which one they like best and then go ahead and buy that pad of paper from there. Now, you might think, why do you have a pop figure in this list of holiday items? But I found this and I thought it was really cool. It's actually a do-it-yourself pop figure. So it comes completely blank and you can go ahead and paint this with whatever colors you want. So you could follow along with the design and paint it the way she's supposed to look, or you could go with completely different colors and paint this whatever way you like. And this set actually comes with a couple of them. So it's got Bo Peep, Simba, and Dumbo. Now I found this on Amazon, so I'll go ahead and make sure I link them down below. But I thought this would be so fun to do and I might make a video about this at some point as well. But just for somebody that likes to play around and try different things, this would be really fun to do. Now for somebody that's into colored pencils or graphite, they use sharpeners a lot or even pastel pencils here. So I've got two Derwent Superpoint Mini Sharpeners. This is hands down my favorite sharpener. So if you know somebody that's still using those little tiny handheld sharpeners, this is a really great upgrade. They're so easy to use. They last a really long time. I've had both of these for about a year now. Now I do keep my pastel and my colored pencils separate because the pastels will wear the blade down a little bit quicker than the colored pencils will alone. But you know this is definitely my favorite when I actually have another backup one. So this one was on sale. This is their regular sized one and it was on sale. So I had to get it just in case something happened to these. So you know, I use it a lot when I've got extras. <laughs> then the next cool little item that I have here is this tablet holder. So what you do is you put your tablet in this little slot here and then when it's open, now I've got it on an angle just so you can see, but then when your tablet's open, you can just have it sitting in front of you and you can have your reference photo on your tablet. You could zoom in, you could do whatever, but it's sitting up nicely for you to be able to see. 
So this has been a really great addition. I just keep it at the back of my desk and I'll have my tablet in there and I can see my reference photo very clearly and I can access it really easily. Now, gouache is something that I've just gotten into this last year as well. And I do have a full review on this set here, but I'm showing this set because I think this is one of the more complete sets because it comes with 24 colors of gouache and you can see them all here. It also comes with this palette inside and it also came with three brushes brushes that were inside but I've taken them out and putting them in here with my other brushes so it came with a big round filbert a flat and a smaller round brush I do believe I just went ahead and purchased more of the Hemi brushes because I actually really like them but this is a great set for somebody that wants to get into gouache now who doesn't love getting a good sketchbook for Christmas so I've got a couple of different options for you here. And the first one that I have is this Arteza sketchbook. And I don't like this so much for watercolor or watercolor pencils. This was done with watercolor pencils. And I just find I couldn't get it as vibrant as I wanted. But surprisingly, I do like this sketchbook for gouache. Now, this was done with watercolor pencils as well. This was a first little attempt at a landscape with gouache. And it went down really nicely. Now this picture here I did for that gouache set that I showed earlier in this video. This was the image that I did for that and gouache lays down really well in this sketchbook. So I don't like it for colored pencils or other wet media. I do really like this sketchbook for gouache. My favorite sketchbooks for colored pencils, watercolor pencils, watercolor is hands down the etcher sketchbooks. So I've got their hot pressed here. I've got their perfect sketchbook here. And I've also got their cold pressed here. So all three of these have 100% cotton paper in them. And I'm just going to quickly show you. So this was done with watercolor pencils and colored pencils. This was done with ink tense pencils. So it can take a little bit of water to the paper. But there's enough tooth there to also build up your color, which I really like. This paper is really nice. This is the perfect sketchbook. And I like this for watercolor. This reminds me a lot of the Arches paper. So if you really like Arches paper, but you're looking for it in a sketchbook type, hands down, this paper is the absolute best that I've ever tried. Now the perfect sketchbooks are a little bit more pricey than their cold press ones, but I still really like this paper. Now, if you're looking for a little more affordable watercolor sketchbook, this is still hands down my favorite. These are some flowers that I did, and this is a real-time tutorial on my channel, um, so you can always check that out. But you can see how you can get some really nice soft color blends. The paper really doesn't buckle a lot at all. You can see it buckles a little bit, but compared to a lot of regular sketchbook paper, it really doesn't buckle that much. These were a couple of gouache reviews that I did. Um, so it takes gouache nicely as well. This was a watercolor piece that I did using the Cotman watercolors and I did a wet and wet and I wet this paper a lot. And as you can see, it's barely buckled. So this is still pretty darn good paper. So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite watercolor sketchbook papers. Now I know there's not just artists out there. There are colorists as well, which if you're a colorist, you're also an artist because you're creating. But one thing I did want to mention is this coloring book subscription. Now I used to be subscribed to this and I have stopped it since I've started to create more of my own original art, but I used to color in coloring books quite a lot and that's how I got into art. So I really highly recommend this coloring book subscription and I'll just show you a few of the um, books here. So each month they have a different theme. Now this is from a couple of years ago, um, but you can see here all the different themes. And I will go ahead and just flip through this one real quick because it is a Christmas special one, just so you can see what kind of stuff it comes in. Now, this is actually decent paper. I mean, it's not the best paper ever, but it is decent paper. And the cool thing about this is different artists collaborate and get their artwork in here. So it's not just all from one person, it's all different people. So you get different styles, which is really cool. And it gives you a variety. Now that's when I had started and apparently I never finished. So this is great because you have something to look forward to every month. And as you can see, there is a lot of designs in here. So you definitely get, you know, a month's worth of stuff plus, right? 
so it's really cool. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, but let's just get into our bonus items. So the first one I have here is, you can obviously see it's the colored pencil magazine, but I'm just talking about magazines in general. Now, there are a few different magazines that you can get for colored pencil, but there's also ones for watercolor, pastel, oils, acrylics, almost anything that you could think of would be in a magazine format. Now, I used to get the physical magazines like this, but now I get them digitally. It's a lot cheaper if you get them digitally, and I can just keep them on my tablet and read them when I'm in bed or when I'm out somewhere. It's a lot more convenient than carrying around a physical magazine with you. And getting a digital magazine subscription for someone is going to give them something to look forward to every month. So if you get a year-long subscription, which is only going to run you about $30 to $50, depending what magazine you're getting. Some of them are even cheaper than that, but then they're going to get something every month for a year that they can read and look at. So this is a great gift. The next bonus item I have here is from Smart Art, and this is a monthly mystery art box subscription. This is so fun. I've been getting these for about a year now, and what it is is every month they will pack up a curated box. It's always something different. You get tons of supplies in here, and it's usually something I've never used before. Now, I do do a video on Smart Art every month, so if you want to go back and check those videos out, I'm pretty sure I have them in a playlist just to see what type of products come in them. Now, I will have a link for this down in the description that gives you 10% off if you want to try it out, but this is really fun, and it's great for somebody that already has quite a lot of art supplies you're not sure what to get them and maybe they like to try some different things or they'd like to branch out but they're not really sure where to start this box comes with everything that you'll need to do your project it also comes with these little pamphlets and each month it comes with a different one now this is an older one but it gives you some information on the products that you're going to use it gives you all of the products that are in the box. And as you can see here, you get quite a lot. So you have enough to do a month's worth of projects with these boxes. It also gives you a beginner's project step-by-step -step in here and a more advanced project step-by-step -step in this booklet. On the back, it also gives you some project pointers and some tips. And it gives you four little prompts if you want to go ahead and follow along with their prompts in here. And if you do the prompts and you post on their social media and you tag them for Smart Art Project and Smart Art Weekly, you'll actually get 500 points each month for doing the challenge. And that's equivalent to $5 off of your box. So each month you could put that $5 off towards your next box, or you could save your points up and get a free box a couple of times a year if you're doing the prompts each month, which is really cool. Now it does give you enough supplies so that you can complete all four prompts and it usually gives you extra. So let's say you have a family of four people you could use this box and have like an art night. And all four of you could use the supplies in this box very easily. It definitely gives you enough supplies to last. And once I've completed all four prompts, I have a lot of the supplies that are still left over. So you definitely get the bang for your buck with this box. Now, like I said, I have a link down below in the description that will give you a discount off your first subscription with this box, but I highly recommend it. That's everything that I have for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.